It's been another week and another exciting round of developments for one of the most high growth sectors in all of financial markets with the most bullish tailwinds. So let's get into what's going on. Uranium stocks overall were flat to up. You have the North Shore Global Uranium Mining ETF up, you know, 1.85% of the week, taking a little rest from its big gain last week. But just remember, nothing goes up in a straight line. So even with a radically positive bull market, you're going to have somewhat dull moments. That's just how financial markets work. Look at the chart of Amazon on its way from $10 to $3,000. It's not pretty. It's not fun. But you're rewarded for holding through the dips, bottom line, in investing. So let's get through some of the news. You know, the multi-trillion dollar infrastructure bill, which has a big chunk devoted to uranium, which again, I can't emphasize enough how impactful that is because it's a complete paradigm shift from what we had before. So in this article, how the infrastructure bill could change Department of Energy nuclear grid. This came out on 11.11. The Department of Energy vowed yesterday to start a $6 billion nuclear credit program within about four months to help keep U.S. reactors operating. So this article says some advocates have questioned giving economic aid to reactors that could affect prices for other power generators or delay renewable energy expansion. And a number of reactors have closed or announced plans to shutter in recent years. This is all part of the change in the mindset around uranium. Before this year, extremely bearish. This year, changing, right? So the Department of Energy Chief of Staff responded and told reporters, the United States can't afford to have this setback of losing a lot of carbon-free electricity from a climate standpoint, noting it's a top priority to keep the country's nuclear fleet operating wherever appropriate and safe as additional clean energy is added. This article also says the larger Build Back Better Act, still pending in Congress, could provide even more benefits to the nuclear energy on top of the $6 billion we've already talked about if it becomes law and includes a production tax credit for operating nuclear plants. That's probably not priced into the current market, but if that does pass, expect a spike in the price of nuclear, but also the overall investment in the space. And I came across this absolutely brilliant chart from an article published by NASDAQ, and the source was Bloomberg Green, and it shows the insane shift from where we were with the uranium market and where we're going. So if you just look at this side by side, okay, with the spot price of uranium, it tells you everything. So watch how the production of uranium globally impacts the spot price. These are the top producers, US, France, Japan. Uh, and back in 1990, China had absolutely nothing. Japan was starting off lower than where it was later in the decade. And so was France and the US. As you head into the 2000s, you see the big spike in production from 1990 to 2000. You see it take a while in the spot price to really pick up, but you do end up with kind of a supply crunch, massive uranium price squeeze, uh, like we're kind of seeing today and what people are predicting is going to happen. But you know, back then you could see the rising trend from 1990 to 2000 of, your, of production globally, right? And in the spot price, it was actually flat from 1990 to 2000, but that just tells you there was a big inefficiency in the market. The market was not willing to give anyone a premium on the price of uranium until a supply crunch hit in the early 2000s. Boom, you have this massive spike, huge bubble in uranium stocks, and it had nowhere to go but up until you have the meltdown of Fukushima in around 2011. And you can see on the left, Japanese production, French production, US production, US and France dip, Japanese production craters. And so does the spot price. So you can see, you know, starting in 2011, that's when the spot price just craters down to kind of its base of like 20. And you even have France in 2015, complete opposite situation from where it is now. France commits to cut its dependence on nuclear energy to 50% by 2025. So, you know, the herd kind of follows, you know, the fear mongering stories around uranium because of Fukushima and they are bearish. 
And so that brought us this, this bear market. But what we've been talking about on this show is how Japan is changing their narrative. They're totally reinvesting in, in nuclear and restarting the mines that brought the production to these higher levels back in the early 2000s. France is all in on uranium. So this dipping line is going to reverse in 2020. Japan's going to bounce right back up. You have this huge, huge production increase from China that clearly the market hasn't even factored in. The US, you have the Biden administration being bullish. So what my point is, these lines, which directly impact the price of uranium, are going to absolutely turn around, if not have an exponential increase. What do you think is going to happen to spot price of uranium from here with these lines all going up, the Japanese production skyrocketing back to where it was, huge, huge level, France skyrocketing, US bouncing, UK is somewhere in here, they're, they're huge, and China, the elephant in the room, absolutely massive. It's going to dwarf France and it's going to, in my opinion, probably compete with the US. So this is just a whole nother player that wasn't even factored into the prior uranium spot price chart. And you tell me if you think this doesn't mean all time highs for the uranium price, but it has to, in my opinion, because you have these countries, which are going to make all time highs in their production. You have a supply deficit currently in uranium and you have an inflationary environment where the cost to mine and produce uranium are higher. Therefore, the cost of the actual output uranium spot price is going to increase with those input costs, all at the same time as the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust is just bleeding the market of supply. It's an absolute perfect storm. So let's go into the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. Our friend Alex Weinstein on Twitter you can find at the Alex W. He tracks kind of the Sprott purchases. So let's go into kind of what they've been up to. You have daily pounds purchased by Sprott and Spot price, pounds and thousands. So, you know, the red bars are the purchases by Sprott and the Sprott price is actually the orange and the implied Spot price maximum is the green. So you can see how kind of starting off in August, Sprott price was at its floor, right? $30. And then with the buying of Sprott between August and September, Sprott price spiked. And Sprott price buying cooled a little bit. That's the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust buying cooled a little bit between September, October. And here it is just buying more, adding more. And the Sprott price, because of all this, went from 30 something to 40 something. You can see Sprott's still making kind of big whale purchases through November. In fact, on 11, 12, they purchased 500,000 new pounds. So this is a totally new development. And if you just look again at the spot price chart of uranium, I just want to make the point that you're not comparing apples to apples. If you look at the current market post 2020 and comparing it to the past, because the past didn't have China, the past didn't have the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust and other physical uranium trusts like Kazadam Prom and Yellow Cake PLC didn't have that. It did to some extent, but not, not to the level it does now. It didn't have that. And it just didn't have an inflationary environment where commodities look ready to just absolutely skyrocket with the cost of, you know, everything that goes into mining. So oil and mining equipment and things like that. What else is going for today's market is the insane positive narrative going on. Here are just a few headlines that literally just came out this week. And this is all from major, major publications that a lot of people are going to read. So Al Jazeera, is nuclear power the way forward to combat the climate crisis? The answer to this is going to be yes. The Economist, lots of people like to read this, right? The discreet charm of nuclear power. Financial Times, what I got wrong about nuclear power. So I actually looked through this and the writer is actually talking about how he used to you know, be afraid of it, but the facts proved that because they have proven it to be safe for so many years and because the technology is increasing around the safety of it and things just keep getting better and better, that it's a no brainer. So what my point is, there is an absolute shift in the narrative at this, at this moment in time. You also have exciting new developments 
in the technology and the innovation around the nuclear power sector. So we've talked about on this show that UK, you know, major economic player is deeply investing in nuclear power. And a byproduct of that is one of the great companies of the world, Rolls-Royce, is now developing these small modular reactors with the cutting edge technology. So here's from the Rolls-Royce website, UK small modular reactor, pioneering intelligent power. Our world needs more low carbon power than ever. Rolls-Royce SMR has been established to develop an affordable power plant that generates electricity using a small modular reactor in an intelligent way to meet our future energy needs. We have developed a clean energy solution which can deliver cost competitive and scalable net zero power for multiple applications from grid and industrial electricity production to hydrogen and synthetic fuel manufacturing. So people talk a lot about, you know, the innovation around hydrogen technology. Well, what if you're using nuclear to create all the hydrogen in the world? Well, that's bullish. A single Rolls-Royce station will occupy the footprint of two football pitches and power approximately 1 million homes. It can support on-grid electricity, off-grid electricity, enabling decarbonization. In prior videos, I've talked about how investment by these big countries is going to manifest itself in seeing real technological innovations from big players. And this is just, you know, kind of a major one that I wanted to call out. So here's another one. And it does speak to the fact that the more investment goes into this space, the more innovation and growth you're going to see. So here's a headline from the Seattle Times. This next generation nuclear power plant is pitched for Washington state. Can it change the world? Chief Executive Officer of Maryland-based X Energy Cell aims to bring the project online by 2028. It's part of a broader attempt to develop safer and more flexible reactors to define the nation's energy future. These efforts have gained support in the nation's capital, like we've talked about, where many Democrats eager to make progress on climate change have joined with Republicans to funnel money into development. The Federal Energy Department has received $160 million to help fund X Energy and the infrastructure bill that cleared Congress on Friday. It ups that amount to cover almost half the projected $2.2 billion cost of the Washington Reactor Project. We believe what starts here in Washington is going to change the world. So there you go. Just another example of government backing, seriously impacting private industry growth. X Energy, along with the Bellevue-based Terra Power, founded by Bill Gates, and Portland-based New Scale, proposes reactors that can ramp up and down their electrical output much more rapidly than the large reactors now operating. So this is the future. You're not going to have these big, massive, expensive, large public utilities. You're going to have these small modular reactors. This agility could keep electrical grids in balance as more wind and solar power comes online. So it's going to kind of work beautifully with these very kind of intermittent sketchy solar and wind power generation, which is great, but unreliable. So this is going to kind of be the backstop for that. And part of why you could see the whole is nuclear energy safe narrative die down as you do get this cutting edge technology that increases the safety. So just in a nutshell, the way it works is you have these fuel pebbles, they're loaded in the top, helium is pumped through, it carries the heat through an exchanger where water is turned to steam for producing electricity. So helium causes the heat and then you get the steam and that produces the electricity. So used fuel pebbles, radioactive, are dropped from the bottom of the core and piped directly into dry casks and stored on site without the need for interim or active cooling. So X Energy claims on its website, the fuel retains waste and prevents meltdowns entirely. The big money is going into these companies and investment into these projects. And the anti-nuclear argument is just losing at this point in time. So yes, you're definitely going to have them. Yes, you should have people questioning the safety and the cost of these projects. But based on all the government backing, based on the private investment by people like Bill Gates and support by people like Elon Musk, the big money is going to fund these projects. So while there is an argument and people you know, going against it, the pro-nuclear side is clearly winning. So I'm going to keep you posted on all the developments in this space. It's an extremely exciting growth environment. This is the type of environment that, you know, should 
excite investors. So I'll keep you posted every step of the way. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this discussion should be taken as investment advice. Guests are not compensated for their appearance. Do not base any investment decisions on the information presented.